the writing itself is still a tedious thing, but it's kind of fun to get the instant feedback. Of course, AI will replace certain tasks that we are doing manually right now that we no longer need to do. Hey everyone, this is Mark DeGrasse, the president of Digital Marketer, and this is the podcast that keeps you up to date on everything you need to know when it comes to digital marketing. From the platforms you'd be focused on to the kind of tactics and tools that are working today. Today our guest is Marcus Heitkoder, the owner of Rockwell Training and a best-selling author. And today we're going to be talking about using AI to write your next book, which Marcus is actually doing, even though he's done it from scratch before. So welcome, Marcus. Hey, thanks for having me here. So excited about this. <laughs> no, I'm so excited to have you. You know, I think I, I met you originally at the M3 meeting last year. And then I was like, oh my gosh, you live in Texas. We should probably uh, shoot some content, do some stuff. And then it's been a year since then. So this year is I the know. year. <laughs> <laughs> Starting today. Uh, so why don't we just start with uh, kind of what you've written before uh, and kind of that what that process looked like and why you decided to use AI for your new book? Yeah, I mean, uh, so I'm a trader and investor, and uh, I mean, the markets are always evolving. So uh, I've written now uh, four books, and uh, this is why it's always a super painful process, right? I mean, you got to write the book, and you're staring at a blank page, and then the cursor is blinking at you, and then uh, you write a page, and then, okay, now I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> so it's just tedious, and then you... You give it to to some friends to review, and they have so much feedback. And if you give it to more than one friend, uh, I mean, three friends, three opinions. So it's to a point where it always took me months and months. And uh, towards the end, I, I lost all motivation and said, oh, "Screw it! I, I'm I'm not gonna do it." And I must say that this time around, the process is much much more enjoyable because we we have new tools that can help us uh, writing or getting our ideas out and on paper. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I've actually found too, because I, I've written a lot, but I use AI a lot. And I always tell people, it's like, no, I could just do 10 times the amount of research and 10 times the amount of ideation and 10 times the amount of actual writing, even in my style, using AI. So is, is that what you found too, or do you use it more for one aspect of the creation Now process? you see, it, it's really interesting because I mean, of course, just a, a few weeks after we had OpenAI, we had this push button solutions, write an ebook uh, with the push of a button. And here is the super prompt that writes you the whole ebook. And uh, this were, I, I think over the last few weeks and months, we saw a lot of crap coming there. Amazon just recently, when you try to upload a Kindle, they now want to know what AI tools did you use to write the book, if any, and how much did you use them? So they have different categories. Because I think that also Amazon got sick and tired of all these, these spammy, crappy books. Because, I mean, let's talk about it. AI, uh, generative AI is kind of regurgitating some existing content, right? So here, I mean, as, as authors, we have unique ideas that we want to get out. So the, the way how I like to use AI is kind of as my my sparring partner here. And I really like to use Claude over ChatGPT. I mean, these days I'm using Claude basically exclusively. Is this also the tool that you're using or are you on ChatGPT? What do you prefer? You know, what's so funny is just last week, I think, because uh, we had that meeting, I was like, you know what? I haven't used Claude in a while. Everybody keeps talking about it. So now... <laughs> Now I've used it every single day and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is actually the, the ability to upload documents or big giant, you know, batches of text. Like it just, it doesn't take amount, any amount of time. So now I could do even more research because it's doing all the work for me. Right. So I, I had this uh, kind of book brief where I had this idea of what I want to accomplish with the book, right? I mean, just writing down a few things like, why am I writing this book? Uh, who is the target audience? Why is this book unique? What is the core message of the book? What is the reader getting out of the book? And uh, then I also wrote an outline. And uh, this is where I thought, you know what? It probably helps to have another set of eyes on it. And so I decided to feed it both into Claude, uh, the Claude AI tool, and ask Claude, hey, uh, take a look at this. And this, these are my goals. That's what I want to accomplish. And this is how I'm plan how I'm planning to achieve the goal. So what do you think? Give me some constructive feedback. 
and uh, I, I got some feedback. And uh, this is when also in my inbox there, I, got, uh, I received an email about a seven-day book challenge uh, from Darby, who is actually also here in Austin. I thought, okay, let me try this. Seven days for a book versus a whole year almost or several months. That's a little bit ambitious. Uh, but I thought, okay, with the help of AI, maybe I can do it. And, and again, I'm using AI more to get constructive feedback. So as an example, when I have a chapter, I kind of know the bullet points, what I want to talk about in the chapter. And again, I'm using Cloud and AI as a sparring partner here and say, okay, for this chapter, here's what I have in mind. Do you think that I accomplished the goal that I set out? And then I write an introduction and in the introduction is, oh, here's what you're going to learn in this chapter. And again, I, so I'm, I'm really using it as chat GPT was meant to be used, like chatting, right? The only difference is that I use Claude as a tool here. I, I found this better because you mentioned it, you can just upload so many things. It's fantastic. Well, no, that, that's a great point about the feedback because I think for a lot of times, yeah, you want to share it with your family and friends, but they have their own opinion of you. They have their own opinion of the subject. And, you know, everybody's biased. You know, everybody talks about, you know, sometimes AI, like, oh, AI could be biased. I'm like, there's no one more biased than any individual person. That person's going to be the most biased. So, you know, when you talk about going to somebody, even an editor, like they're going to have their own opinions. But when you go to AI, it doesn't care. Like it's just giving you an answer. And I think that's one of the, the best things about it. So you, you hear the, the consensus, which is essentially what AI is. Right, right. So I, I started refining a prompt where I basically give AI the instruction right now, act like an editor or world-class editor at Wiley Publishing, because Wiley Publishing publishes a lot of financial books, right? So obviously AI already knows all of the financial books and how they're written. Right, and then say, okay, I'm giving you a chapter of my new book. And again, I'm mentioning the content brief of what I'm trying to accomplish, what I'm trying to do in this chapter. And I say, act as a world-class editor from uh, Riley Publishing and give me constructive feedback in terms of, do I convey the main idea in a concise way, right? Because that's also what AI is really good at, I found telling me when I have too many examples, right? So he said, hey, dude, Two examples are enough. You used five. That's way too much. Right? I mean, you're overstressing the point. On the other hand, here is where you could just smoothen out the transition a little bit. So I, I must say the the writing itself is still a tedious thing, but it's kind of fun to get the instant feedback. It's almost like somebody is telling you, you know what? Good job here. Here's what you can improve. All right, let me improve this. And uh, I think it's... As a human, I do much better when I'm getting instant feedback versus writing dozens and maybe hundreds of pages and then handing it off to somebody and somebody comes back and say, oh my gosh, here is all the 187 changes that you should make to the book. Look me now, right? I mean, it's so no, it's so true because I mean, I think that, that kind of motivation you have to like write the book, like, ah, oh, you got all your stuff set up, you've done your research and now you can sit and write the book. And that ends up being like, 1% of the time that you have to do that. And so when you do finally sit down and write something and then you have to send it off to somebody or you worry about like, you know, is this going to be taken right? Like, is this just a good idea to me? Um, you know, that could be, you know, a, a huge delay. And then you get the feedback and it's even less motivating because you're like, well, that point I really liked. <laughs> I hate to interrupt our podcast, but I have an announcement about Digital Marketer's content certification. Content without a content marketing strategy is an expensive mistake, but it's one that most businesses are making. When it comes to content marketing, all content should be created with a clear purpose to move a customer or potential customer along the customer value journey. That's why you need Digital Marketer's Content Mastery Certification. You'll learn how to leverage a complete content system to strategize, create, and distribute content that just plain works. When you become a certified content marketing strategist, you'll master the craft of systematically creating and promoting content that drives noticeable revenue for any business, and you'll get a badge to prove it. Learn more right now at digitalmarketer.com slash content cert. And again, so for me, sometimes I struggle to come up with uh, analogies or metaphors, right? And this is where, again, AI to the rescue, that's great, instead of just sitting there staring at the screen. Okay, consider or think about it like, Mm, okay, what? Like what? I don't know. Eating ice cream? No, that's not good. Uh, go shopping? No, that's not good. Okay. Now, Claude, can you give me a list of possible metaphors or 
analogies for this. And these were, oh my gosh, perfect. Well, I also in my books, I, I like to tell personal stories. And of course, I, we all have a gazillion stories and I never know which one would be a good one. So I kind of prompt Claude and say, hey, what would be a good story to tell a good personal story? And he says, hey, it would be good if you could, if you had a story like this. And then I'm thinking back and yes, I remember three years ago, that's exactly what I experienced. And then I can draw from my own memory bank, bank to bring it in. And you see, Mark, this is where I think when we use AI in such a way, we still get unique concepts. It's just AI assisted in the same way we're no longer writing on typewriters, right? No, no, that's an excellent point because I think it's, uh, you know, it's just that instant feedback that, that gives you the most result. And, you know, even the personal stories, because sometimes I think like, well, I'll remember this story and then I'll put it in there and it'll be good. And then you forget the story 10 seconds later and then you're back to square one. Whereas even for, you know, expanding on your idea where you could say, hey, you know, here's three stories that I have from my past, like which one best fits this situation and why. And then you have a good lead in. But your your idea is even better. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, like, what story? Well, the other would thing work you here? mentioned it. I mean, <laughs> of course, when we're writing a book, we're doing a lot of research. I mean, you're doing a lot of research, uh, right? Whether you're just writing a blog article or even a book, and uh, sometimes it's a little bit weird. How do we fit this research in there? And especially with Claude, where he can fit so much in there. I mean, I can literally upload a ton of research and then say, okay which of all this research that I've uploaded or all the statistic would be perfect in this chapter to illustrate the point that I'm trying to make. And then just sift through it and say, you know what, I think the best example is this. And again, it's more the instant feedback and the, the sparring partner here that makes this whole process for me more enjoyable. I mean, now I wake up in the morning, and I say, let's write the book. And in the past with the other books, it was like, ugh. You know how you have goals, how many words you want to write a day, and then I say, I have to write another thousand words today. Oh, I really don't want to do this. Now it's it's definitely more fun. So I'm trying also to kind of gamify it. I love that. Well, another thing that I like about it is I tend to be a little scatterbrained where I'll say like, oh, well, I really want to write about this, but I just had a really good idea for chapter seven, and then you want to bounce to it. But if you do that kind of linear approach to like, I'm writing the book, then you got to wait. And so I think with AI, you could just be like, oh, that's a good idea. Let me just pop it in there. That looks great. Copy and paste. And now you're making progress, even if you're not interested in the specific chapter right now. Yeah. So this is how, how I feel about AI. I don't think that it will necessarily replace me as a writer here, for example. Uh, but I, I do believe that it helps my creativity here. Now, of course, AI will replace certain tasks that we are doing manually right now that we no longer need to do, right? I mean, in the same way as at, at some point, uh, when factories and the industrialization, right? I mean, there's always, when we had computers, uh, I mean, uh, manual data processors uh, were replaced. So this is just part of uh, the evolu evolution that we have as humans. And I really think it's important to not resist all this technology as, as scary as it might be, but to, to embrace it and say, okay, how can I, as a business owner, as a marketer, as a content producer, how can I leverage it? What makes the most sense instead of being scared and say, oh, okay, Terminator is coming, Skynet is coming. And <laughs> right. And I mean, again, don't get me wrong. I understand all of the, uh, all of the dangers and possible threats that are connected with it. But uh, right now, I'm just using it as a tool in the same way as I'm using uh, Google Docs as a tool and no longer a typewriter. Oh, yeah. Well, and, and going even, you know, expanding on that, you like you used your friends as a reviewer and you used, uh, you know, Google to do research on a topic and you use, so it's, it's almost like we've always relied on other people or things to do this research that now we're doing through AI. It's just way faster. And, you know, as much as people argue, it's less biased. It's I could trust this answer because they don't care. You know, <laughs> AI doesn't care. And I, I talked to to my friend, uh, Mark, his name is also Mark, uh, about it this morning and say, hey, listen, uh, you know that I'm writing the book, you might be wondering why haven't I seen any draft just yet? It's because I'm using AI as a sparring partner. 
it will not replace you. Of course, I will give you the book because I value your opinion, but hopefully you have less of the, uh, as you said, the, the scattered brain thing like, oh, dude, you're all over this place in this chapter. And uh, you, you can really provide your unique feedback here. So that's uh, where he said, oh, my gosh, I love it. Because in the past, he has uh, received chapter by chapter the book and then say, uh, okay, all right, I'll read through this and uh, also want to make sure that it's not stepping on my toes, right? I mean, our friends are on the one hand, I mean, everybody has an opinion. Uh, on the other hand, I mean, <laughs> how much of the opinion do you really share with everybody? Oh, exactly. Well, and they might not be the target market and they might not be, you know, all these other aspects of the, the actual reader that you want. And they may have no interest in the subject, which then, you know, they'll give your feedback because they're your buddy, but it won't be helpful feedback necessarily. And, you know, honestly, you could, you could actually analyze the book itself using Claude. Just say, hey, look at this book. Based on this book's content, who do you think the target market is? And then you could start reviewing the book in a way that's actually useful for you making changes and then use AI to make the changes. So that's huge. So, so how long do you think it'll take you to finish this book versus your books in the past? You know what? I uh, started two weeks ago, and uh, I, my goal is really to have the first manuscript done by the end of the month, So, which would be another two weeks. So uh, really, I'm thinking more a month versus uh, six to eight months uh, this time. And again, even if it is a little bit more, even if it is six weeks instead of four weeks, great. It's still way, way, way faster. Hey, um, I wanted to ask you, you, you like doing a, a lot of research, right? Mm-hmm. Have you heard about the the tool Perplexity AI? Yes, I haven't used it too much, but uh, it always pops up. I'm using this for the research here because I think Perplexity AI is great. So you can hook up Claude or ChatGPT to it. And uh, the cool thing is that it really has current knowledge. So it serves the internet and gives you the sources where it's great, right? So you, you see a source, you can click on it and quickly scan the article to make sure that uh, Claude or ChatGPT um, summarized it correctly. So especially when you're writing a book or an article and you want to have some some current stats. And I mean, in the past, we sifted through all of the Google uh, search engine rankings, right? And now we can have AI doing it for us. Again, I'm not blindly trusting it. This is why I like perplexity AI, because I get the sources so I can go to the source. But that's another huge help. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I also use uh, Elissa.org. And so Elissa.org is just uh, research papers. And so if you want to make sure that it's backed up by something, and it's more than just a search of, of research papers that actually does have AI to kind of take your question and find relevant data specifically about that question. So yeah, I mean, that, and that's, so now it's, because before it was always like ChatGPT, like you don't know where the sources are, it's screwing up the numbers, it's doing all this stuff, which it still does. So just to warn everybody, Verify your data, uh, but yeah, perplexity or, or illicit, I think, would be awesome to you know get the real stats. Yeah, because then you have the link to the source. Because otherwise, when ChatGPT makes something up and you say that sounds reasonable, that could be, and now you're trying desperately to find the source, and then it's not easy to to do that. You don't want to go back. I've done that with uh, speeches before, where I was like, "Oh, this sounds good. I'll look up the information later." And then, no, no, just get it done now because you'll forget. And then someone will be like, where did you get that data? And you'll be like, oh, I came up on ChatGPT. I'm sure it's good. <laughs> it's dangerous. Uh, well, that's awesome. So you're thinking this year, uh, do you have a name for the book yet? Or where can we learn more about it? Uh, no, I have uh, 10 possible working titles. And this is where I go back. And uh, I think I really, at some point, feed the whole book uh, into Claude and say, hey, here are my 10 ideas, what do you think? Or do you have any other ideas? I I don't want to do it too early. Oh, by the way, I got to get a kick off this. Last night, I thought uh, about a domain name, right? Because you want to have a domain for your book. Guess what? Last night, I registered mybestbookyet.com. Oh, <laughs> I there thought, you go. Okay. <laughs> so what, what is the name of the book? I don't know yet, but it's my best book yet. And I also thought, you know what? mybestbookever.com was also available. So I registered this. So I don't know yet whether this will be my best book yet or my best book ever. But go there to mybestbook.com. <laughs> my oh, best book. hey, there's a, there's a networking opportunity right there because you could just go to every author and be like, hey, I'm only listing one of your books. 
on my website, which one is it going to be? I'd be, I'd be all about that. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, oh no, do this one. Well, that, that's fantastic. I mean, I'm so excited that you're, you know, as an author, you're using uh, AI for both the research and the writing process and finding that it's, it's faster and easier and more fun. Yeah, it's less work, you know, and that's, it's what we always wanted, you know, <laughs> and then we finally get it on a silver platter and everybody's, uh, you know, turning it into something evil. It's like, no, you can take back 50% of your time that you used to spend doing research and use more ideas or come up with more ideas. So that's fantastic. Well, where, where, where could uh, people find out more about you and what you do right now? Well, my website is rockwelltrading.com. So mainly what I'm doing, I'm a trader investor and uh, this for my website, I uh, show business owners and busy professionals how to create a second and third income stream through smart trading and investing. And this is what the book will be all about. Excellent. Well, I'm very excited to read it and uh, we'll have to have you in the studio soon. We'll do some more content and uh, teach people about some, you know, finances for, uh, for marketers, which we all, we all need advice. So thank you so much, Marcus. That's good. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Mark. Okay. All right. And thank you so much for listening. Be sure to hit that follow button so you can notify when all of our new episodes release. Please share this with that friend who's clueless about digital marketing. And don't forget to visit digitalmarketer.com where you can access all of our courses, certifications, and training programs. Thanks again, everyone. And we'll see you next time.